my dear. Of what use were... I uh, won't! We'll not give him up. That's better, my dear. As I was saying, of what avail were your four years at Vassar... Father, stop it! What have you got against him? Nothing much, except that he's a wild young whippersnapper and constantly getting into scrapes. Aside from that, he seems to be a very likable young man and... Oh, yes, there's one thing more. He can't support you. I love him, Daddy. Expect to live on that, Mary Jane. No, but... No buts about it. What's he doing now? He's selling automobiles. Selling automobiles? How many has he sold? Oh, I see. Well, how long has he been selling or, or trying to sell? Oh, about three months. Honey, that young man couldn't sell rain in the drought area. He could. He can. Why, he can sell anyone. Anyone? Yes, he can. Well, if he can sell me, I'll no longer object to your choice. All right, we'll see. Someday you'll see him behind his company's general manager's desk. You... <laughs> That young man doesn't cut out his pranks. You'll see him behind something else. Jack. Jack, dearest. Darling, what have you done? Oh, nothing. Just moping along the highway at 70. But they can't put you in jail for that. Is that so? And here I am, sweet. And it's the third time I've been here in two months. Well, what of it? Oh, nothing much. Except that they'll take my license away from me and probably keep me in jail for 30 days. Oh, they can't. I won't let them. I... Darling. Oh, Jack. What will Dad say? Plenty. And then some. Darling, I have it. Good old Mr. Knowlton. He'll fix everything. Your father's attorney? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, he'll fix it. He'll fix it so they'll throw the key away if your dad gets to him first. Hurry, dear, kiss me. I'll be back in no time. Thank you. No. But you must help us. But I can't, my dear. I, I'm too busy with important matters. Ever since... I was so high, I've always come to you with my troubles. Though you were only Daddy's friend and lawyer, you were always Uncle Bob to me. And now, now when I need you most of all, you won't help me. You won't help me because you're afraid of Daddy. Who says I'm afraid of your father? Who said I won't help you? You'll find me at the 7th Precinct Station, should anything of importance arise. Yes, Mr. Norton. This is your third offense, is it not, young man? Yes, sir. Well, what are you going to do about that? Well? Unless... Unless what? Unless... See, Judge, I was only doing 35. 60 days! where you can't be reckless. <laughs> <laughs> Next case, People versus John Rocco. Reckless driving. Are you guilty or not guilty? Well, I have a good excuse, Your Honor. You see, tell it to me when you get out in 30 days. <laughs> People versus John Wade. Reckless driving, third offense. Your Honor? My client desires a trial by jury. Trial. Granted. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Oh, uh, 
Good morning. Uh, Mr. Norton isn't in just now. Oh, playing golf as usual. Just when I need him most, I suppose. No, he's in court. You'll find him at the seventh precinct if it's important. It is. I'll look for him there. Thank you. <laughs> Do you own a car, Mr. Brown? I'll say I own a car. It ain't been running so good since a week ago Sunday. But Wednesday, uh, no, it was Tuesday. <laughs> I had the carburetor fixed. And oh boy, does she go now. Except you see, uh, you see, I am. Accepted. <laughs> Accepted, Your Honor. Michael Donovan. Michael Donovan. Uh, here, sir, here. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Mr. Donovan, do you own a car? I do, that, sir. Ever been arrested for speeding? <laughs> uh, thank you, sir, thank you. <laughs> uh, sure, if that old shadow of mine could go fast enough for that, I'd be that proud I, I'd be before your reverence this minute, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Objection. Defendant John Wade is charged with reckless driving. You may proceed. I call Officer Crane, my witness and complainant. Raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Take the stand. Officer Crane, will you tell us just what happened? I'm at the corner of Duane and Ninth, waiting for some wise guy to come along when, when he, he blows by like a streak. I blows my whistle and lights out after him. I give her the gas and follow him for about 10 blocks and can't catch him. It's two miles before I gets him. How fast was he going, officer? 70 or better. You all with me. Officer, was the defendant traveling recklessly? He's doing 70, ain't he? <coughs> well, uh. Officer, what are you doing with that uh, plaster on your face? Why, I'm trying to hit the dirty... <coughs> the defendant off, I fell in front of his car. Uh, did he run over you? I'm here, ain't I? That's all? Nothing further. Mr. Wade, will you kindly take the stand? Raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Take the stand. Mr. Wade, were you traveling at the rate of 70 miles an hour when Officer Crane arrested you? Yes, sir, I was. Even though you were, Traveling at the rate of 70 miles an hour, you were not driving recklessly, were you, Mr. Wade? No, sir, I was not. Just a moment. Who do you want to see? I'm here to see Mr. Nolan. Well, that's quite all right, officer. Let him come in. Any further questions, Mr. Harmon? No, Mr. Nolan. That's all, Mr. Wade. Thank you. Your Honor. I state most emphatically that the old gray mare ain't what she used to be. No, sir. She's a whole lot better. I make this remark, gentlemen, to emphasize the fact that progress marches on. A situation of which we must all take cognizance. You all know, uh, probably better than I, that roads throughout the entire country are... Uh, not what they used to be. And you gentlemen are justly proud of the beautiful highways. Some of them are eight lanes wide, which grace our glorious state. It was on such a road uh, 
that this young man was traveling. All laws must be interpreted in the light of progress. But please, gentlemen, do not misunderstand me. The evidence the defense has offered in this case is not based on any apology for recklessness. Laws and customs change. And sometimes it is indeed difficult for the letter and interpretation of the law to keep step with the progress that our noble modern civilization is making. Not only have roads improved, but cars that travel on those roads have improved. This is a day when modern cars can travel in safety at speeds that once were impossible. Gentlemen, is it unsafe to travel along an uncongested highway at a speed of 70 miles an hour in a car that can do all day 80 or 85 and upward? Well, what happens if it's a bad spot as a floor? We travel on improved highways today. But gentlemen, even though an obstruction had lain upon the road, it would not have presented any danger because, as we have shown, his car was equipped with the most modern devices for lifting a wheel over such an obstruction. And even though a front tire blowout had occurred, owing to the wheel's construction, it would not have endangered the defendant or anybody else. Was he a reckless gentleman? When we consider that he, along with other drivers of most modern cars, is protected by bodies of solid steel with turret tops. Gentlemen, uh, th <coughs> this officer has uh, told us that he fell before the defendant's car. <laughs> <laughs> I firmly believe that when we consider the testimony as to how it happened, that you will agree with me that he should rightfully be considered the defendant in this case uh, and charged with recklessness, if, uh, if any. Gentlemen, this, this officer has confessed that he was stealthily concealed behind the shrubbery along the parkway in hiding ready to pounce upon any unsuspecting victim that might happen by. The defendant came along in perfect control of his car, though admittedly driving rapidly. Gentlemen, can you see the look of joy on Officer Crane's face as he mounts his motorcycle and takes after the victim? follows him for some little distance and then deliberately, recklessly drives in front of the defendant's car. He skips and falls. It is fortunate indeed that the defendant's car is under control. But is Officer Crane grateful? No, gentlemen, I think I may say with perfect assurance, he is not. And finally, gentlemen, it is not too much for me to say that all charges of recklessness which have been brought before you have been wiped out by the safety which the defendant has demonstrated in the powers, speed, safe construction, and control of the defendant's car when he saved the life of Officer Crane, that he might come here as a living witness to the safety of the defendant's manner of driving. Safety is the purpose of the law. And the question of whether the young defendant was proceeding with uh, recklessness in one hand and safety in the other should form the basis of your verdict in this case. With uh, due regard to his honor and the law which prohibits reckless driving. Safety, gentlemen, I repeat, safety. Gentlemen, the defendant in this case is charged with reckless driving. In the usual course of events, the testimony would be presented to you for your consideration. However, in this case, I am constrained to follow a different proceeding because the testimony is beyond dispute. Outside of city, town, or corporate limits, there is no definite speed limit in this state. 
Therefore, it must be definitely proved that the defendant was driving recklessly. The only uh, testimony as to recklessness was that he was driving at the rate of 70 miles per hour. But the testimony also shows, however, that the defendant was driving a car of modern make, equipped with each of the most advanced features of safety and control. The presence of Officer Crane in this courtroom today is sufficient evidence and counteracts any charge of recklessness made against the defendant. It appears that under the circumstances, there's no competent proof of recklessness. Therefore, you members of the jury are dismissed. I wish to thank you for your attention. And the defendant is discharged. Oh, Mr. wants to do a little business with you. Yeah. Are you sold, Dad? 